Hey friends, today I'm going to rate all of the Premier League home kits for the 2022-2023 season. Going in alphabetical order, let's start with Arsenal. Arsenal at times feel a bit like a fashion brand because their kits are almost always so stylish. Like them or hate them as a club, it's hard to argue that they don't reliably produce good looking jerseys. As usual, there's a lot of good things to say about the Arsenal kit. Uh, I love the collar, especially with the red zigzag. The collar gives it a nice retro feel, like it's an Arsenal shirt from the 90s. The monochromatic logo is a neat touch, but it really doesn't do a ton for me. Uh, I think it's a bit similar to another shirt that I'll talk about later. Overall, it's very classic, it's very clean, and I think this deserves a spot in the phenomenal ranking. Next, let's go to Aston Villa. I really like the v-neck continuing into the chevron pattern of the shirt. Uh, for me, the sleeves are a little plain, the collar looks a little thin. I feel like it's good, but they just didn't do too much with it. It doesn't stand out to me, but it's pretty solid. So I'm going to put it in good tier. Bournemouth. Bournemouth's on the other end of the spectrum with the risks that they took. Lots of zigzags in their stripes, it feels quite aggressive. Uh, this is another v-neck jersey. The collar and sleeves cuffs, they're a little thick and simple for my taste. Uh, in my opinion, it's a bit too busy with the zigzags going in the opposite direction in the background. I think the kit is ambitious, and I really respect that they're trying something creative. I just think it's a bit too brash. I'll give it the ranking of good, but I'll try to keep them on the upper side because I respect the attempt. Next we have Brentford. Right off the bat, you might notice their kits and think that I accidentally pulled up last year's photos for Brentford. Actually, this is still Brentford's current kit. Uh, so doing some research, here's what I found. Brentford aren't changing it because they want to make it so people don't feel like they have to new buy a new kit every season. Their aim is to help fans out in that respect due to the current crisis in cost of living and how it's rising. It's intended to be a bit more sustainable and ease the burden on Brentford fans a bit. I actually think it's very considerate to the fans and a nice gesture from Brentford to show that they actually care. With that being said, I don't mind the kit itself. The stripes are a little thin and sometimes remind me of a circus tent. The collar has an odd front white bit that looks like it was really meant for the back and that they just had it turned around. But looking at them on the field, it looks pretty good. I think it ranks low on the good tier, but they still deserve it because of the club's initiative and I really respect that they care for the fans. Right off the bat, my first impression of the Brighton jersey is confusion. I don't really know what the artistic vision was for the shirt. The front has two thick white stripes that look like a set of twin skyscrapers. They're contrasted really heavily by the thinnest yellow stripe in the center, and I do not think that meshes too well. I'm not a fan of the rounding stripe at the top either, uh, how it doesn't go all the way to the collar. With that being said, I think the richness of the yellow is fantastic. I love the detail of the yellow on the collar, sleeves, and Nike logo. I think this is a big step up from some of their previous year's kits. I just think they could have done a lot better with the rest of the kit. So that earns it a spot on the good tier. Chelsea. Uh, this is an interesting one for me because it looks very different on the field than it does in pictures. The neckline is a Henley with some white and teal design that I honestly don't know what to make of. The rest of the shirt leaves a bit to be desired. It really looks like a plain blue t-shirt with a number 3 on it. I think simple can be elegant, but this looks a little lazy to me. Crystal Palace. They went with their classic red and blue stripes and took a creative leap with it. Instead of blocks, they chose a brush stroke effect for their striping. Initially, I thought the striping looked like scribbles from a crayon, but it's been growing on me lately. I really appreciate how the blue stripes aren't just one hue, it's a dark blue and a light blue and this really adds a layer of depth that makes the shirt a lot more interesting. I am torn knowing that this is a complete knockoff of a Croatian team's 2021-2022 kit. Look at the Hadjuk Split Away kit, made by the same company, Macron, and tell me that this is an original design. Uh, it hurts to hear, but at the same time, at least it's not one brand stealing another brand's designs, so I guess there's a silver lining in knowing that it was a reuse, not theft. What makes a shirt excellent for me is the collar and sleeves cuffs. Just take a second to appreciate that. Uh, I love the white, blue, red, and white striping, with red and blue thin stripes really complementing a simple white cuff to cap off the shirt. Overall, I think it's phenomenal. I regret that it's a reused design, but it's still clean and beautiful to look at. And actually, I'm going to place it ahead of Arsenal. I really, really like this kit. Everton. The patterning on the upper shoulders is quite nice, and I wish more clubs would actually do something fancy with their shoulders. For Hummel, this is a pretty dull kit. 
There's a light design on the shirt that catches light a little bit, but just like Chelsea, it feels pretty plain. I feel like they tried to add something fun with the white patch in the armpit, but I don't think that looks good at all. The sponsor of the shirt just pops out with how plain the kit is, and I don't think the shirt is deserving of a spot higher than meh. Fulham released their kit very recently, much later than pretty much every other team, and I'm not sure why the release took so long. The kit is pretty basic. It has a uh, plain white body with no substantial texture or pattern on the body. The shoulders have the classic Adidas three stripes on top, and the stripe runs down the length of the side. The sleeve cuffs and collar are very interesting to me. They took the red accent from the crest, added a thin wave in the black. It's a bit hard to see from far away, but up close it looks fantastic. I also think it's quite cheeky how the back of the club is a small print that says London's original football club. This is a pretty basic kit, but it's not bad. I'll place it in the good tier. Uh, probably between Brentford and Bournemouth. Leeds, it's a pretty classic shirt. Mostly a simple white shirt with highlights of yellow. There's a pattern of LUFC all around the shirt, which I think is a great design choice. Uh, it adds a little character to it. The print is a reference to the fact that it's the 50th anniversary of their 1972 cup winning side, so that's a nice touch. Uh, this may seem like a small detail to a lot of you, but I really like how the sponsor's colors actually match the kit. There are some kits whose sponsor does not match the colors of the kit at all, or actually contrasts, and I'll talk about that specifically for one club later. But Leeds does a great job integrating the sponsor into the kit in a way that actually looks really good. Um, as a club, Leeds is generally great at the fundamentals and is a simple club. Their shirt matches that identity perfectly, and I think this one is very attractive. For Leeds, I think the shirt is deserving of the great tier. Leicester, it's a design inspired by retro looks. The collar is a bit funky, but it feels a bit unfinished to me at the same time. The sleeves are quite simple as well. I think the gold adidas logo and club badge are interesting choices, considering that the rest of the shirt is just blue and white. The gold feels like an afterthought that was meant to kind of spice up the shirt, but I don't think it achieved that effect. I don't really see the vision of the shirt, so I'm giving it a meh. Liverpool went very minimalist with this shirt. It's incredibly plain. There's some nice texturing throughout the shirt, but the simplicity of everything actually bores me. Liverpool as a city has strayed away from the frivolous, and I suppose it's fitting that the kit matches. I appreciate the simple cuffs. They look like they're knitted. It's unique, but the color's plain and boring. The shirt really doesn't do it for me, and overall I think it deserves a spot in the meh tier. Manchester City. This is a retro kit inspired by some of the shirts of the 60s. A few things jump out right off the bat. City opted for a central badge and brand logo compared to off to the side like most shirts normally do. The spacing is pretty solid, and I think it works. The body of the shirt is pretty plain. Uh, it's that classic light blue, and there isn't much design outside of that. The burgundy and white striping along the collar and sleeves is a very nice touch. It's a pretty simple shirt, but I think the details of it bring it up. With that being said, I, I think it isn't too special, but it does look very clean, so I'm going to put it in the great tier. Manchester United. There's a lot to be said about this shirt. The shirt's a lot like Arsenal's, which I think is interesting considering Adidas made both of them, so they must have known what was going on. The collar's a polo type with triangles pointing inwards. This triangle motif is also continued into the body of the shirt in the form of a light background design. The United patch on the shield is quite interesting for me. It almost looks like a castle banner or something, but it on this shirt it feels a little complex, a little too busy especially considering that their club logo is already one of the busier ones. The sleeves are nice and simple with no crazy details in the cuffs. I think that begins to balance out some of the rest of the shirt, but I'm not sure if it's enough. The shirt feels a bit cluttered to me in a way that the Arsenal shirt didn't. Still, the shirt is unique and creative. I don't think it deserves a spot in the great tier, but I think it deserves a spot very high in the good tier. Newcastle. Newcastle has a rich history of black and white stripes, and it's really hard to work outside of these constraints. Still, I don't think they did themselves any favors. With that being said, the shirt is pretty basic. The body of the shirt makes them look a bit like referees, inmates, or footlocker employees. What I do like about the shirt is the inclusion of the blue. Their mascot, the magpie, has a blue stripe, so it's nice that they're including that pop of color in the shirt. I don't love the hue of the blue that they chose. To me, it looks a bit cheap. I think 
blue is a chance to make their shirt pop a bit more and they went a little bit too bright instead of going with something that would be a lot richer and look nicer. I feel like they could have done something more with the collar and the sleeve cuffs and blue, but they left it as a simple stripe on top of a shirt that is already only stripes. I feel like they had a lot of potential, but it ended up being a bit bland and looking like a lot of other Newcastle shirts. So it's going in the that tier. Nottingham Forest, a very unique jersey in this lineup for Nottingham Forest. Let's start with the lack of the chest sponsor. It's very clean and simple. They've had a chest sponsor before, but I think it would be awfully bold of them to start the season without one. They announce the shirts, and in the promotional photos, they do not have a chest sponsor. I'm really not sure what to make of that, but I think it's bold, and I really am interested in what they're doing with their kit. The color's quite interesting, too. It's a darker red with multiple layers there. The sleeves have a pattern on them that's actually meaningful to the club rather than just being some cool lines or texture. Uh, at the end of the sleeves, there's a sort of layering effect with that darker red to be a bit more interesting. Nottingham Forest are a team that's returning to the top flight of football and they want their presence to be known. Their shirt is bold, it's different, and I actually like it a lot. I would place it at the bottom of the phenomenal tier. Southampton. A big red stripe up the center, bordered by black stripes that lead into a black collar. White on the outside with a geometric design that I believe relates back to their stadium. Another shirt with the centered logo, I think that's pretty cool, pretty fancy. Uh, and I think it matches the centralized stripe very well. The shirt is pretty unique for a Southampton shirt, but it feels a bit close to the classic Ajax shirt for my taste. The chevrons on the shoulders is interesting, but it's starting to feel all over the place. I will place it in the good tier. I respect what they did, but I think it could have been executed a little bit better, a little bit more unique to them rather than looking like a Ajax clone. Tottenham, another one of the simpler kits, but that's part of Tottenham's home kit tradition. The body is a classic lily white with a textured detail throughout. The collars and sleeve cuffs are both striped with a dark blue surrounding a venom yellow. One thing I hate about this kit is a red sponsor. Why is the AIA lettering always red? It stands out in a bad way, and it's the same color as their rival Arsenal. I don't understand why they couldn't find a way to make the sponsor match the aesthetic like Leeds did. With that being said, I think Tottenham's shirt is very clean. I think the light pattern and design in the sleeve cuffs and collar makes a simple design work which is where I think other shirts like Chelsea and Liverpool fell short. For me, this earns a spot at the good tier, but falls short of great. West Ham. The shoulder and sleeve design is quite interesting on the shirt. It's rooted in retro designs, and I think the shirt still works today. I'm a bit put off by the actual thickness of the collar and sleeve cuffs. The collar actually seems to be almost like a mock neck on the models, which is an odd choice, but not the worst thing ever. I think the shirt strays a bit from the traditional claret and blue of the club with the tertiary color of white being so prominent, but I think it actually makes the shirt a lot more interesting. Some hardcore traditionalists might disagree with me, but I think the white makes the shirt look very nice. Uh, I'm impressed with this shirt, and I think it deserves a spot in the great tier. Wolves. I like the color. The black coming into a point in the front actually reminds me a lot of their badge and the hexagon on it, along with the angular wolf. I think that's a nice parallel. I think the black on the shoulders isn't bad, but it feels like they were just searching for places to add black to make it more interesting, rather than deliberately designing the shirt. It seems just like another shirt that tried to go simple, but failed at making it not boring. Uh, on the bright side, I want to add that the sponsor looks a lot cleaner than last year's, so it's earning a spot on the mid tier between Newcastle and Leicester. This is my complete Premier League home kit 2022-2023 rating. Overall, I place a lot of kit towards the bottom tiers. I don't think this is a great season for home kits, but maybe some of them will grow on me as the season progresses. Which teams do you think have the best and worst kits? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.